Hi friends, good evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Vinayak Ringan, pediatric surgeon and founder of Search Test. And uh, I am super delighted to have with me Yamini. Yamini has stopped uh, INSS plastic surgery this year. And Yamini, how does it feel? That I feel like extremely elated and relieved and uh, even surprised because I wasn't expecting it. So yeah, it's a good uh, post-exam uh, break and in a celebratory mode. Hey, great, Yamini. Yamini, so, you know, uh, I know you've been a hardworking kid all your life. You know, you've done your MBBS in a, uh, uh, in, in Kanpur, MBMS in Kanpur. But why why plastic surgery specifically? I, I don't know. I always wanted to be, I always wanted to do plastic. Even before I did my MS, I was looking if there is any six-year course available for plastic. But at that time, it wasn't available in AIMS. Now it is. So I always, I don't know, I always had very clear uh, plan ahead that I will do MS and then I will do my plastic. I mean, I don't know, I feel it's very artistic, it's very dynamic and uh, it involves everything from head to toe and there is always a plan B and you can always, uh, there is no fixed protocol, like you can always uh, uh, improvise and, uh, and it's always uh, better to make people look more beautiful and it gives people confidence, I think, a lot of confidence, a lot of and for people who are like uh, victims of acid attacks and all of that, it gives them their dignity, their confidence, in a way, their life back. So Absolutely. And, uh, you know, if you if you are genuinely artistic or creative, I think plastic is the is the way to go. And I think I really appreciate the fact that you told that there is no set protocol. Uh, there is a lot of scope for imagination. And I think that's a very wonderful way of putting it. Uh, Oh, I, I must thank you for because I'm I'm going to use this phrase again and again. <laughs> so yes, I think that that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, I mean, uh, when I spoke to you, uh, you told me that you know you hardly had any time to prepare because you just finished your MS right now, right? Yeah. So did you start your MS prepare MCH preparation, the INIS and the ETSS right from your PG days, or was it only after the exam and during your MS exam? So no, uh, in the initial, because uh, at our place, like there are uh, the MS, uh, the three years that I have done my post-graduation, it's very hectic in our uh, center. Like you don't mm -hmm. get a lot of time in first and second year. So third year was a bit where I was able to study a bit, but I mostly, my MS exams were in January end. So uh, from December, I studied for my MS professionals. So I covered my general surgery part during that and... When it ended, my MS professionals ended and then I did not study at all for NEAT SS was before INISS. On 31st March, we had a NEAT SS and my result came out around 15th March. So my result was and I was celebrating, it was good and I was in the mood and so I just gave NEAT SS for the sake of just giving it. Post NEAT SS is when I thought that um, now I really should start studying and that's when I picked up. But my I can say when I was studying for my MS, my general surgery was covered only because as it is 30 questions approximately out of 80 are general surgery only and the rest is plastic. So that part was uh, already covered so I didn't have to work really hard because my general surgery was already strong. So okay. only plastic, okay. then I prepared for plastic post need assessment. Okay, and uh, you, you're telling me about the search question bank which you used for your general surgery as well, yes, right? Yes, I did see a few questions. I, I was not able to do much, I would say, but I did uh, see the question bank. And uh, most importantly, I would like to mention the webinar uh, which I attended. Uh, Ma'am was there before uh, my stage two. So we had a webinar where ma'am was there and she was uh, guiding. She was really helpful. She told us all about uh, how to prepare for it, how to answer, what all questions will be asked. And she kind of, it was like a mock interview. So I would say it was at the last moment, just a day before, just two days before the uh, my stage two. And uh, I didn't know the importance of it. I just joined it. And then I saw everybody was there, almost all the rankers like 21 people who have qualified were there in that webinar and she was guiding everybody and it was sort of a mock. It really helped me, I would say. That's the best part. It makes, it makes a lot of sense, uh, Yamini. Yamini, so coming back to the uh, routine, so how did you manage to squeeze in time? Because it is not an easy exam to crack for sure. And there have been, there have been people who have been studying for a pretty long time. So how, did you, how was your routine preparing for INISS? Um, Within like 25, 30 days, were you able to study the entire material or, you know? No, 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 not. I just, first time, what I did was I sorted out the important topics. I saw the, I saw the previous year questions. I saw what all is like repeatedly being asked. So I listed out down those topics and I was like, I have to at least complete these. So I have to complete. So I completed those topics and the rest part, which was left, 
I saw some YouTube videos from various platforms and uh, even yours, QBank, I saw some, uh, so here and there a bit, but mainly important topics, I didn't leave. I covered all the important topics, rest, which was less important or which there were some topics which are not, I was not able to understand at all. So I was like, let's not waste time and keep on, keep on trying to understand it. Let's just move on. And so even if it will come and anyways, nobody's going to get 100% right, right. And I think what uh, exam day skill is also very important. It's very important to be in the zone and be calm and all of that. And how did you do that? I don't know. I was actually one important uh, thing I would think was I already had a seat through need assess. So I was not like really worried. I was like, I'll attempt full. So I attempted 78 questions out of 80. So it's not like I knew all of them. Like I barely knew 60 or 50 and 18, 20. I just attempted because I knew that to really make an impact in this exam, I really have to score high. So I was not under a lot of pressure because I knew I already had a seat. So this was like, but still I want to, everybody wants to be in AIMS, right? So I was like, no, but this is important. I have to give it a shot. So I attempted first of all, you have to like attempt really high. You have to go above 75, no matter what. If you'll attempt below 70, you already have lost your chance. That is a, that's a wonderful piece of advice. So if you're crack, if you want to crack iron yeses, which means that you will have to be in a position where you attempt more than 75 questions. I think that's a very, uh, you know. According uh, to me, you know. if you really want to, like, if you want to just qualify, that's different. But if you really want to pick a seat and make an impact of the rank, then you have to go above 70, 75. You have to be in that zone. You cannot be below 70 at any cost because other toppers will go till 70. I have attempted, I had attempted 80 and two were like, I said, okay, let's just not just leave one because there were many questions <laughs> I did not know at all. I was trying to go by elimination. Okay, this option does not, like, I was trying to, Intelligent guess, which they say. I was trying to do that. So, but okay, it worked for me now. Now I know that it was right to do it. It worked really well. <laughs> you have topped the exam. So, uh, coming back to the, uh, the specialty. So, what branch of uh, plastic surgery do you want to specialize in? I know plastic has now become such a, you yes. know, over, uh, you know, it's a very wide branch right now. It's like, you know, just like how GI has gotten split into colorectal, HPV, upper GI. So, where do you want to, what do you want to do with plastic? So mainly I want to go into aesthetics and uh, I also want to go into a bit of onco reconstruction. So these are my two special interests. So burns I will learn, but I mainly want to like keep continuing uh, in like, especially breast related, breast reconstruction, breast implants, augmentation, reduction, and all of that and aesthetics. Fantastic. But fantastic. So I think uh, the next few years, I think we really hope to see Yamini uh, yes, dominating dominating the aesthetic scenario in India. Hey, thank you so much, Yamini. I think that was a very you know uh, useful session. Uh, but one last question, which I want to ask uh, you know before we finish, is that what advice would you give to residents who are starting to prepare? Keep your circle small. Keep your friends minimum, but really good friends for a healthy like environment and. Keep studying consistently. No, you don't have to study 12 or 10 hours. Just keep doing your duties. But just touch something or the other every day. Be calm and be really positive. Like, do not just force yourself to be that. And do practice questions. If you're not able to cover a topic from your notes or from videos or from books, just do questions of that topic. And just write, make an MCQ book. Whatever you get wrong, only note whatever you get wrong. Do not note what is right. Just which you can't remember, keep an MCQ book. And then next time, just revise it. If you have time, you have to revise it. I didn't have, but if you have time and then make another notebook out of those questions, which you were really not or highlight them. So it will become a very high yield, uh, like uh, material for just before the, and just, just revise that. Do not do anything, sleep well, and just read that few pages that you've made in the past few days. Fantastic, fantastic. Hey, thank you so much, Yamini. I think that was very illuminating. Uh, and I must really thank you for sparing the time to talk to us. And your advice is going to benefit a lot of students. So I think that's absolutely great. Thank you, sir. Thank you.